Hello, how are you guys doing today? Grandma wants to read you a story. It's about Benjamin Franklin, one of the great men in the beginning of our country. Good name, Benjamin, isn't it? All right, this starts with Benjamin Franklin was born in Boston, Massachusetts on January 17th, 1706. Massachusetts was then one of the 13 American colonies that belonged to England. So this is way back before the United States was even a country. It was one of the 13 colonies. There were 17 Franklin children. That's a big family. Benjamin's father hoped that Benjamin, the 10th and youngest son, would grow up to be a minister. He must have come from a religious family. But can you imagine 17 children in his family? He was the 10th son. Benjamin always had lots of ideas. When he was still a young boy, he invented swimming paddles that fit over his hands and helped him swim faster. You see that? Almost like flippers for your feet, but paddles for your hands to help you swim faster, to grab the water and pull more. Benjamin began school when he was eight years old. He had good handwriting and was an excellent reader, but he did poorly in arithmetic. Benjamin's father did not have enough money to keep him in school. Back in those days, you had to pay to go to school, not just college. When Benjamin was 10, he began to work in his father's soap and candle shop. Benjamin cut wicks, poured hot wax into candle molds, and did errands. He hated the smell of the wax and the boiling soap. He hated making candles. Back in those days, they didn't have electricity either. And so you had to have candles to see at night. Benjamin wrote poetry. He loved books and reading. So when he was 12, his father put Benjamin to work in a print shop. The printer and owner of the shop was James Franklin, Benjamin's older brother. James Franklin printed one of the first newspapers in America, the New England Current. Benjamin set type and ran the press. He also wrote clever articles for the newspaper. He signed them Mistress Silent Dugan, so he didn't write under his own name. So no one would know who wrote them. James was angry when he found out that his brother was Silent Dugan. He refused to print any more of the articles. When Benjamin was 17, he left his brother's print shop. He went to New York City and then to Philadelphia, where he worked in a print shop. Soon after Benjamin arrived in Philadelphia, he met Deborah Reed. They were married in 1730. Benjamin had three children, William, Francis, and Sarah. So his family was not nearly as big as the family that he came from. In 1728, when Benjamin was 22, he set up his own print shop and published a newspaper, the Pennsylvania Gazette. Benjamin worked hard. He became the official printer of Pennsylvania. Later, he became the official printer for New Jersey, Delaware, and Maryland too, for a lot of the states. Once a year, beginning in 1732, Benjamin printed Poor Richard's Almanac. At the time, it was the most popular almanac in America. It had information on the weather, recipes, and a calendar of important dates. It also had stories and wise sayings, including early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Have you heard that one? And haste makes waste. That's another very common saying. I have to be careful not to rush things or we can make mistakes. Back in those days, they didn't have computers and Google to look things up. And so 
that Poor Richard's Almanac was very helpful for the people. Benjamin Franklin worked hard since he was a boy. By 1748, at the age of 42, he was a rich man. He retired from the printing business. He spent his time in public service, inventing and experimenting. Benjamin Franklin helped set up Philadelphia's first fire and police departments. He helped to start the first lending library and the first hospital in America. He was made postmaster of Philadelphia and later postmaster of all 13 American colonies. He was a busy man and did a lot of good things. Benjamin Franklin invented the Franklin stove. You see it over there? It saved fuel and heated a room better than a fireplace. Back in those days, they had fireplaces. They didn't have central heat in there. He invented bifocal glasses and long arm to reach books on high shelves. It was very useful for grandma. He also invented the lightning rod that saved many American homes from fire. Wow, all those things that he invented. Benjamin Franklin was very interested in electricity. In one dangerous experiment, he flew a kite in a thunderstorm. When lightning struck the kite, sparks flew from a key attached to the string. Benjamin had proved that lightning is electricity. That's a pretty dangerous experiment. I hope you don't try that one. He's lucky he lived okay. In 1765, Benjamin went to England. He spoke at the English House of Commons against the Stamp Act, a tax which the American colonists felt was unfair. Franklin helped to convince the English to end the tax. Benjamin Franklin remained in England for 10 years. He told the English king and his advisors to give people in the 13 colonies more rights and freedoms, but the king refused. Benjamin Franklin returned to the colonies in 1775, soon after the beginning of the American Revolution. He was at the Second Continental Congress and was chosen to help write the Declaration of Independence. That's an important document. In 1776, Benjamin Franklin traveled to France to ask the French people to help America in its fight for independence. The French people liked Benjamin, Benjamin's clever stories. They honored him as a great scientist. The French king, Louis XVI, agreed to send money and weapons to America to help them in their war against England. America won its independence, and Benjamin Franklin helped to write the peace treaty with England. Benjamin Franklin returned to Philadelphia in 1785. He was an American hero. When his ship was about to dock, cannons were fired in his honor, bells were rung, and a crowd waited to greet him. See over there on the dock when his ship's coming in? They were so happy to see him and to celebrate all the good that he had done for them. Two years later, in 1787, a constitution was being written to govern the new United States. Benjamin Franklin was the oldest delegate to the Constitutional Convention. He was 81 years old. In his final years, Benjamin Franklin wrote his autobiography. He also spoke out against slavery and worked to outlaw it. Benjamin Franklin died on April 17, 1790 at the age of 84. When Benjamin Franklin wrote his will, he called himself Benjamin Franklin Printer, but people all over the world knew him as more than a printer. They knew him also as a writer, 
scientist, inventor, and statesman. They knew him as Benjamin Franklin, great American. And there he is, there's even a statue of him. Benjamin Franklin, a very great man in our history. I thought grandma would share that with you because I think that's an important thing for us all to know about great people. Remember, grandma loves you. Hope you're having a good day.